Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to do a couple of videos on integrating by parts, particularly when an integral repeats. The idea is you start with an integral, you go through the integration by parts process a couple of times, and then it turns out you end up with the same integral you started with. So it looks like it's going to go on forever. We're going to talk about how to solve those. So if I were doing this by parts, I would choose something to be my u, let's say it's e to the x, and something to be my dv. Let's say it's the rest of it, sine x dx. And so then if that's the case, then du is e to the x dx. And my v, the antiderivative of dv, is going to be negative cosine of x. So let's say I choose all those things for integration by parts. And now I go ahead and use my uv minus integral v du. So let me go ahead and make sure I've got that uv minus integral v du, right? Once we do this, okay. So we'll get uv would be negative e to the x cosine of x minus the integral of v du. So minus, I have a negative as part of v du, so I'm going to go ahead and put that out front, so that'll make that a plus. And then the rest of that will be e to the x cosine x dx. Okay, now at this point, you would look at this and notice that now I need to do integration by parts again, right? So I have a product here. I will choose my u to be e to the x again. Let's say this time my dv is now cosine x dx. And if that's true, then du, the derivative of this, would just be e to the x dx again and the antiderivative of cosine x dx, so that will give me a sine x for v. So for this part here, just this second integral, I'm going to have uv, which is e to the x sine x, minus integral v du, and I get integral e to the x sine x dx. So let me go ahead and copy down the rest of what I had, right? So I had this original integral e to the x sine x dx. And then we already had this negative e to the x cosine x term out front plus that. So what you can see, I think, maybe here if I get rid of my brackets and make this a little more obvious, I'm starting to get an answer, but I still have an integral left to do yet again. So I would say integrate by parts again, except we notice maybe now we're going in circles, right? We're getting a big loop. This thing is the same thing that we started with. So we would just keep going on forever if we kept doing integration by parts. The way to do this and actually figure out how to get a solution is nothing more then the idea of combine like terms. And the idea here is that you have this integral e to the x sine x dx. You have another one on the other side. So if you're trying to solve for that thing and you have it on more than one side, simply move everything to one side and combine like terms, right? So what we'll do here is we'll move this to be over there with its like term. So I'm going to add the integral of e to the x sine x dx to this side. That will get rid of that. And I'm going to add the same thing over here. I can do that. Okay, and once we do that, think about what's happening here. What do I have on the left side? Well, um, I have this integral plus itself. Um, what's a cat plus another cat? Well, it's two cats, right? So this is really two integral e to the x sine x dx's, right? Think of it as an object you're counting. You have one plus another one gives you two of those things. Okay, so this term went away. We don't have that integral over there anymore. We do still have these other two terms, though. Let's copy those down. So we have equals e to the, or negative e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x. And then how do I solve for this original thing that I wanted? Well, I'd need to get rid of the two. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by two. And then, of course, 
we'll need our plus C, we'll need our constant of integration on there as well, all right? So our original integral, uh, maybe you put the positive one in the front. I don't know, do you like the positive one in the front? Let's put the positive one in the front. E to the X sine X minus E to the X cosine X. Everything is over two. And then we need a plus C. So that's repeated integration by parts where we end up with the same integral we started with in the process, a repeating integral. You'll end up having to add or subtract integrals to both sides to combine like terms to solve for what you started with. Uh, this is super common when you start with a mixture of uh, an exponential and a sine or a cosine function. After two iterations of integrating by parts, then you'll get the original integral you started with. Okay, we've got another example of this in the next video. We'll see you then.